To open Premiere Pro, click on the Start menu, go to All Programs, in the Adobe folder, and then you're looking for Premiere Pro CS4. CS4 stands for Creative Suite version 4. You'll then see the window for Premiere Pro begin to open up. It takes a few minutes to load up the various settings and then it will take you to a settings screen. You can adjust some of these settings later on but to begin with click on new project and then it will ask you for some information about it. It will ask you what format you're capturing from whether you're using standard definition video or high definition video, leave HDV selected. It'll ask you what the settings should be for your particular project, leave those alone for now, but give your uh, file a name. For the purposes of this tutorial, I'm just going to call this workshop and click on OK. This will then take you to a screen of camera settings. You'll need to know what you have recorded in. Most of the time the cameras will record in either 720 or 1080. 720 and 1080 just refer to the pixel size of the video area. For the purpose of this I'm going to work in a project which is in 720 at 25 frames per second. Don't worry about these for now, you can always go back in and change them later on. And this takes you to the main Premiere Pro screen. Now in here you have a preview window that's very similar to the one you will find in Windows Movie Maker. You'll also find you've got other settings. I'm going to move the screen up slightly so that you can see the menu bar at the top. So to import some footage you simply need to find where you've copied the video files. Mine is currently on a memory stick so I'm just going to highlight the footage and I'm going to drag it into my work area. So to do that I click on project that will bring up what's called a bin. A bin is where you keep all the footage that you are going to use. So I've highlighted it and I literally drag and drop and you'll see it says copy. If I let go it will begin to import that footage and it will appear in a list. Now to import your footage into the timeline you simply click on the footage you want. If you really want to have a look at it you can get a little sneak preview by clicking play and watching the footage here. I'm going to pause that or you can drag the file into the timeline do that you click on the icon, drag it over and you can drop it into the timeline. As soon as uh, you do that you'll notice you have this little timeline bar at the top which allows you then to see the footage in the preview window. If you want to make those bigger or smaller you can actually resize those by using the arrows in between I like to keep the timeline particularly large just to make it easier to edit. Remember that you can change those at any time. OK, so all I'm going to do for the purpose of this video is I'm going to drop in my three video clips. Now if I was to play that through I will end up with gaps between these bits of footage where the screen goes blank. You can do that if you want to leave some space between each shot, perhaps you want to put some text between them. If you want the video to be back to back you can either drag it and move it straight between the two so that it cuts from one shot to the other like that or if you want to be lazy you can highlight the gap between the two files right click and there's something called ripple delete which will delete that space and move the files together for you now up here you have a highlighted part of the timeline, almost like a ruler which tells you how long your sequence is going to be. If I want to extend the length of my film I can do that manually by dragging it across. In this menu you have some useful functions. Render effects in work area, render entire work area and render audio. 
if you've done a lot of audio work and you just want to see how it's uh, coming out, you can click on this button. If you've done some special effects on a clip and you want to see if they look correct, you can click on render effects. But most of the time, you're likely to want to see everything, in which case click on render entire work area. I'm going to do that now and you'll then give you a time for how long it's going to take to render those files. So if you've got other things to do or you're going to go and shoot some other footage, it's a good idea to set this rendering whilst you're doing those other things so that it's ready for when you come back. You can see that this particular clip is going to take somewhere around four minutes. That will adjust depending on how big your video files are and how long they last. It also tells you which frame it's rendering to give you a better idea of how long it's likely to take. Be aware that if you do add any special effects or text titles or other things like that, it will take longer to render the video preview. What will eventually happen is that red line above your video files will turn green to tell you that that area has been previewed and it's ready to play back smoothly. You can see that the video preview is now almost at 40% and it's saying that it's got about four minutes left to go but most importantly you can see the green arrow at the top there tells us that this first video clip has been prepared it's moving on now to the middle part of the video and will eventually do the whole thing. Okay so now you can see that Premiere Pro has finished rendering the work area. If I move this tab it allows me to move through the file. So if I go to the start and press play I can now watch the whole film clip from start to finish. It will play the audio files that belong in each clip and I can listen and watch what happens. If I want to stop I can click the stop button here. I can also advance forward by single frames by clicking here and backwards single frames by clicking here so I can fine-tune particular edits. You don't need to worry too much about some of the controls to the left and right they're more advanced settings. Now if you want to add transitions between your different video clips there are ways of doing that. A transition is a way of jumping from one clip to another. It's an editing technique. Such examples include fades or cuts. At the moment our video footage is set to simply cut from one piece of footage to another. The cut refers to this line which is cut through the different clips of footage. If, however, I want to add a different type of transition, I can go up to the Effects tab and I have these different windows. What I'm looking for is a video transition between the video clips, so I go to Video Transitions and I have various options. Most of the ones you'll use will be contained in this Dissolve uh, category. Now when you open this folder you get these different types. Dip to black means it fades to black before going to the next clip. Dip to white means it dips to white colour. Cross dissolve, which has a little red box, means that it mixes the two together and it kind of dissolves between the two. And if I drag that, you'll see this little line appears. Now, if I press the plus or minus key on the keyboard, I can zoom into the timeline a little bit more closely to see where my transition is, and I can see it here. If I hover the mouse button over it, you'll see a little red bar, like a red bracket appears, with an arrow across the middle. If I hold the left mouse button down, I can drag my transition across and let go, and that means it begins it earlier. I can also drag it across the other side and extend it out that way too. And that'll mean that the transition is much more gradual. It'll even give you a little preview of how long it will take up here, but you don't need to worry about that too much. You can fine tune it in these different settings, but to be honest, these features are for far more advanced editing. For our purposes, just know that you can change the length by adjusting those two bars. You'll notice now that the red bars appeared again because the video has not had time to render this yet. If you want to do that, you go to the settings, go across to the sequence settings and down to render effects in work area. 
I think it's good practice though to keep using the render entire work area just to make sure that you haven't missed anything that you need to pre-render. This will take a few seconds to render out. As we've only made one change since the last time we rendered the video work area, this shouldn't take as long. It's a good practice to do short and regular renders so that you keep your workflow smooth and efficient. This will have uh, 10 more seconds to go and then we we'll, should see that red bar turning back to green. And there we go. So if I now click just before the transition and press play, we can actually watch how that works. So it dips to black nice and gradually and then appears again on the other side. And if I press spacebar, I can stop it or I can click to stop. Again, if I want to watch it one more time, I can drag it back. Let's say that you decide you didn't like that transition very much. If you click on it, you can simply then press the delete key and it will remove it. You can then choose a different one. I can now extend that out either way. The reason I got that error message earlier is because there wasn't enough footage in the actual transition area so I've just extended that slightly to give it more space for the effect. Again if I go to sequence settings and I click render entire work area that transition will begin to render and like the last one because we haven't made any substantial changes it shouldn't take very long for it to turn green. When it comes to these different transition effects my best advice is to simply play around with them and see what effects you can achieve. Experiment with them and have some fun with them. If you do think that you've made a mistake and you're not happy with it, you can go to the edit menu at the top and if you click on that menu, you can then select to undo the effect and it will remove it, which is what we're going to do now. So I'm going to pause it for a second, go to edit and I can undo the effect. That will take away the extended line there. If I go again, it will remove that change and if I go at the undo again, it removes it completely. And you can go back several steps. So if you ever make a mistake, you can undo it. If I later decide that actually I quite like the effect, I can click redo several times and that will begin to repeat it. The clever thing about Premiere Pro is that if your redos return the video file to how it was rendered, it will even restore the, pre the preview bar at the top and turn it back to green. What about though if you want to cut the video? Let's say we don't like the first few seconds of this. Let's say we want to get rid of the first five seconds. Well I can drag this line back and you can see the timeline there is now five seconds. To make a cut press the C on your keyboard and you'll notice that the mouse cursor turns into a little dotted line with a film clip next to it. This is the razor. If I now click on the red line, it will make a cut in the video and the audio file that is attached to it. The other shortcut to know is V. V turns your mouse cursor back into the select button and I can now freely click on any of these clips to select them and change them. Let's say that I want to delete the beginning of this because we don't need it. I can highlight it by clicking on it and press the delete button on the keyboard. That now removes it. Now, the problem is, of course, we've now got a black empty space at the beginning of our video. If we want to begin with this part of the video right at the very start, we can simply highlight the gap by clicking the left mouse button, right click and select ripple delete and that will move everything right back to the beginning of the timeline. Control Z is a shortcut for undoing mistakes. I want to do this manually now to show you another way of adjusting the placing of videos in your timeline. So I've got the gap back again. If I left click on this video I can now drag it around in the timeline. So I can drag it to the left but you'll notice that that breaks the transition that we had from this video to this one. If I move this back, it will restore the timeline, but not the transition. You'll need to add that back in yourself. Um, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add an audio track underneath to so the bottom there. So I'm going to expand audio 2 so that we can see 
this timeline more clearly. Audio 1 by default will be the camera's own audio. Now there might be some times where you think I don't like the audio on the camera, it doesn't sound very good and I want to replace it with sound that I've recorded using a separate sound recorder. Now before you delete any of the camera audio, a little tip, leave the camera audio in place and then add your own external audio underneath to help you line up the two more easily so that you can actually match them so that speech appears in the correct place. Okay, so now I want to add a, an audio track into the video file, so I'm going to go into where I have my uh, file saved, and I'm going to drag in uh, a track which I found on the Free Music Archive, a website which provides uh, copyright free music which you can use in your films. So I've now dragged it into my project workshop, so it appears along with my video files, and I can simply like I did with the video, drag it using the left mouse button and drop it in the timeline. I can move it left and right just simply by moving it left and right so I can have it start at a particular point. And now if I play back through the video, it should play the audio track to go with it. Now when you play audio, you'll notice on the right hand side you have the audio meters. You want to keep the sound between minus 12 and minus 6. If the sound peaks too much, you'll see the yellow lines which appeared there, which tell you that you're in danger of clipping the audio, um, which means that you get some very bad sound distortions. You can adjust the level of the sound by clicking on the yellow line in the audio clip and simply dragging it down a touch to reduce the amount of decibels. And that allows you to fine tune the audio. Now, if I click C for the razor, I can cut the audio track at any point. So let's say, for example, that I want to cut the audio at exactly the same place as I've cut the video clips together. I click C from a razor, highlight it on the red line to keep it neat. Click left and it will cut the audio track. Click V to go back to my mouse selection button and I can click on those move, um, audio tracks, hit delete, and now the audio will only play for this first video clip. Or I can drag it across and have that bit of the audio, uh, that bit of the music, line up with this movie file instead. Now let's assume for a moment that for whatever reason I want to get rid of this bit of audio and replace it with this piece of music. If I click delete while highlighting these two together, it will also delete my video. So what I need to do is I need to tell the computer that I want to unlink these files so that I can delete one or the other without affecting its partner. So if I click left on the actual file so it goes slightly darker, right click on here and I get all these different options. The one I'm looking for is this one called unlink. If I click unlink, it now separates these two files so I can freely move the two separately. I just want to click on it, click delete, remove it, and I'm going to now click on the audio, the music I've inserted, and I'm going to move the mouse up to switch it from audio timeline 2 to audio timeline 1. That music is now in place of the audio that was on the camera. So the sounds of the, the birds and the outdoor noises are now gone, and I have music in its place. Now what about if you wanted to add a subtitle to your film. Well to do that, let's go back to the start for the purpose of this. Um, if you go to title, new title, you go to default still and it'll ask you to give it a name and the frame rate. We're working in 25 frames per second so make sure you keep that the same. It'll default to the frame size of the video clip that you're working in so you don't need to change that. Um, and I'm going to give this a subtitle 1 as a name and click OK. Then I'll get a little text window where I can type in how I want the text to appear on the screen so I can place it anywhere I like. I could use this to make a title for the overall film or I can simply place some text at the bottom. So let's type in this is a subtitle test. Now, if I decide that that white writing isn't particularly clear and I think actually I need a different colour for it to show up more easily, I can 
click Control A to select all of the text, and I can change the color of it over here by clicking on that white box, and I can check any of these shades out to use. Let's just try a red, so I'm going to push it all the way up, and I'm going to click there, and it'll give me a preview, so it's a slightly pink red. Click on OK, and the whole of the text will change. I'll just move that out of the way. It's not massively improved, but it's a bit more clear than the white, so I'm going to leave that for the purpose of this. And I'm going to click Close, now that I've finished working in that particular preview window. Now the text won't go straight on the video, you need to drag it in place as a separate video layer. I'm going to put my subtitles on video layer 2 for the purpose of this. The great thing about it is I can drag them around to have them appear anywhere I want. And now if I render that work area, I'll have a look and see how it fits in with the rest of the look of the video. Text layers don't take too long to render out, so adding a subtitle isn't a particularly time-consuming process. It usually takes a few seconds. The most time-consuming part is actually typing the text out in the first place. The reason this has taken slightly longer is because we've also added the audio track and deleted the previous audio that was there. And we'll see that the subtitle appears on the screen, saying this is a subtitle test. It'll also disappear when it gets to the end of that line. Let's press stop. Well, what if I decide that the subtitle isn't on the screen long enough? Well, a bit like we adjusted the length of the video clips before by dragging them with that little red marker at the end. If I click at the end of this there, the red box appears again and I can hold the left mouse button down and drag the clip out to extend the length of it. I'm going to do it all the way to the end. There we go. So now what will happen, instead of ending where it did, it should, in theory, stay on the screen all the way to the end of that video, like it is there. It can be a bit fiddly adding lots and lots of subtitles, but I'm going to add another default still. Certainly the great thing about this is it remembers your settings from last time, so you don't need to adjust them again. I'm going to call this test2 just to make it clear on the program window over here, which is which, and there it appears there by default, and I'm going to type in this is test number 2. If I click Control A, I can highlight all the text, change the same colour as before, click OK, and there we go. I don't need to save anything, it's done it all for me, so I can click X for that to go away, and test number 2 is now ready, and I can drag that in, and there we go. What will happen now is where these lines drop over, it will switch from the first subtitle to the second. Press spacebar to preview, and there we have it. Test number two appears on the screen. Let's say, for argument's sake, you wanted to move that subtitle track up to the top there, so it's against the background of the sky where it will be more clear. Very easy to do, so I'm going to click on test number two. I can either double click on here or I can double click on this one and there it is, it appears in the window again if I click on the select button up here or use V as a shortcut I can then hold down the left mouse button on the text box and I can simply drag it around the screen you might be wondering what these boxes are around the image these are what are called title action safes basically you're aiming to keep critical information inside this inner box. Anything that goes outside these boxes uh, you may well lose on some TV screens and projectors because not all of them have the same proportions, the same sizes and some will scale your image to try and fit. And now when I look at the preview screen you can see it's already moved it up. The red lines appeared again so if I go to sequence I can go to render effects in work area or render the entire work area and it will change that to a green timeline. It will take a few seconds to do that. There's no reason why you can't be subtitling your video clips um, early on because you can always move them around later with the video files if you decide to change the order of your footage. So as you can see now the subtitle test is appearing on the screen and when it gets to the cut it moves to the second subtitle so, quick recap what have we learnt. We have this button here which allows us to drag through the video clips. 
We can move any file on the timeline simply by clicking the left mouse button over it to highlight it. It goes slightly dark and grey and if I click on its name I can drag it around. Click on it, highlight it, drag it around. I can also move video files to different lines to allow me to have more than one thing appear on the screen at the same time in the same way that I've got a video and a subtitle appearing one on top of the other. I can delete things by clicking on them and pressing the delete button. Notice that even though I've deleted the subtitle there, it still exists in my project bin. So if I decide to reuse it later or reinsert it at another point in the film, I can do. I haven't lost it. This is why it's important to try typing up your subtitles as soon as possible because they save in the bin. So you can use them later on and this will speed up the editing process. For now I'm simply going to delete my subtitles and I'm going to delete my video clip and my music and I'm going to just quickly recap how to cut and delete video. So C for razor, the razor appears and I can click anywhere on here to chop the film apart. So I can make very fine changes to the film. V on the keyboard becomes your mouse select button and I can now click on any one of these and I can reorder them any way I like. So I've completely messed up the order of the film. I can now get rid of these gaps simply by dragging a file back together again. Or if I'm being lazy I can simply click on the gap, right click on it and click rip or delete and I can do that for all of the gaps if I don't want them. If, like here, it's getting a bit fiddly because this, the mouse can't quite detect the gap, I can enlarge the timeline by pressing plus and then I can get in there to do another ripple delete. The minus key will allow me to zoom out so I can see other gaps elsewhere and I can ripple delete too. Let's say for argument's sake I want to get rid of this one, I can click on it with the left mouse button, press delete and it's gone. Let's say I want to just remove the audio on this particular clip and so I remember that if I click delete on it, it will also delete the video. So I right click on the mouse button, click unlink and now I can select these two files separately so I can delete the video or the audio as an individual file without affecting its partner. So for this one I'm going to delete the video but I'm going to leave the audio. What will happen now is when that the film gets to that space, the screen will go black but will continue to hear the sound that was originally attached to it. When you drag your footage in, remember to go to Project Workshop, put your footage in the bin by dragging and dropping, let it load up in here, and then drag your files onto the timeline by highlighting them, left mouse button and dragging and dropping the clip onto the timeline. All right. C for cut, V for select, click on them to delete them, right click for additional effects like unlink. Remember to find your effects like your video transitions, you go to the effects tab at the top, that gives you this window, you can use the arrows to drop down the different effects, the one you'll use most of the time is video transitions, most of the familiar transitions that you'll have seen in films are contained in the dissolve folder. But there are some unusual and interesting ones you can try. Have a play around with those, see which ones you like. If you wanted to add a transition between the audio, what you can do is go to the audio transitions. There's only one really that you'll use most of the time, um, and that's the crossfade options. Exponential fade, if you drag that onto the middle of the audio clip, let's enlarge that with the plus sign so you can see it, it will fade between one piece of audio and the next, allowing you to change audio tracks, whether that's dialogue or music, in a very, very gradual way. Just like the transitions on video, if I click the red uh, bracket box on it, I can drag that to the left or drag it to the right to extend the length of time it takes to fade between those two tracks. There are lots and lots of very powerful tools in Premiere Pro, which I won't go into now, you don't need to worry about them too much for the purpose of making a short film. But as you get more confident using the basic tools, we can take you through some of the more powerful functions in the software, including things like colour correction and adding other effects. 
Okay, give it a go and remember more than anything else, save your work regularly as you work. To do that, go to File, Save As when you're first naming your file, give it a name, put it somewhere safe, click Save, and remember, shortcut Control S allows you to save your project at any time. I would suggest you save regularly so that if the computer does crash, you won't have lost anything that you've been working on. The other advice I would give you is to try and make sure you keep a copy of all your video footage and sound files on a portable hard drive so if anything happens to the originals, you've got a backup copy. That includes saving a copy of your project file onto the portable hard disk. So if something happens to that, you've got everything. If you have any questions, please give me a shout. I'll come over and show you um, anything you might be interested in finding out. Or I'll go over these basics again to make sure that you understand how to use it. Okay, enjoy.